saya Jemi, anggota HDII 599 DKI AB. Uh, saat ini saya bekerja di Desain Butters Indonesia sebagai desainer. Harapan saya untuk HDII uh, semoga di hari-hari ke depan ini HDII akan uh, menambah porsi-porsi kegiatan dalam hal desain sehingga uh, akan uh, ber berpengaruh terhadap produk-produk desain uh, desainer-desainer Indonesia yang bisa berbicara secara uh, internasional. Terima kasih, semangat HDI. Hai, saya Ranu, Wakil Ketua HDI DKI Jakarta dengan nomor anggota 255 bekerja di Graha Mata Desain Indonesia. Selamat atas terselenggaranya Mayan Tarajet ID 2021 untuk para desainer di Jakarta. Semoga kita semua dapat berkreasi, berinovasi, berapresiasi, serta dengan menjadikan desain interior Indonesia menjadi sumber semangat Jakarta bangkit dan Indonesia maju. Salam HDI, salam kreasi. Hai, salam HDI. Nama saya Rino Renfil, Ketua HDI DKI Jakarta. Sukses terus profesi kita sebagai interior designer Jakarta Bangkit dan Indonesia Maju. Everybody, good afternoon. Welcome to session two of day three um, of the Mayantara Jack ID 2021. Mayantara is a live virtual festival that serves as a platform related to the creative industry sector, especially design. Mayantara Jack ID 2021 is a special collaborative event hosted by Mayantara and HDI DKI Jakarta. with an angle of interior and facial design as gateway to reach public experience. Anyway, all sessions will be broadcasted live on YouTube, and the session's topic is how to return to better work and learning environment, presented by Sitere and Spielberg. So first of all, let me introduce myself. Uh, I am Trijit Mawati, I'm Design Director at TMS Creative and member of HDRI, who will be the MC and moderator. Before we start, uh, I'd like to introduce and thank as a host to HDI, Himpunan Designer Interior uh, Indonesia is a registered professional organization representing interior designers in Indonesia. And please welcome Rina Renfield as the chairperson of HDII Jakarta. Hi Rina, can you wave at the camera? <laughs> Hello uh, everybody, uh, hi, thank you. Thank you to all. Thank you to Fifere and uh, Steelcase. 
Uh, I hope everybody enjoy all the speakers here. Uh, thank you, Ambua, uh, Elizabeth Chan, and Ibu Matri dan Binga. Selamat berwebinar ya. Selamat siang. Okay. Terima kasih, yeah. Tri. Yeah, thanks again, Rina, for for your presence. So this session uh, will be presented by Fitere and Silke. Um, so Fitere, uh, I'll introduce you a little bit. Fitere has successfully cultivated a trusted brand image and uh, is the interior contractor of choice for landmark development throughout Indonesia. Working by Vitere offers an inspiring office uh, collection crafted for modern corporations to create the ambience of success. Long experience and continuous research shape the collection, as demonstrated by innovative features. Working by Vitere is in partnership with many global brands in the office furniture industry. One of those is Steelcase. For over 108 years, Steelcase Inc has helped create great experiences for the world's leading organizations across industries. Steelcase leads the way in creating great experiences by offering a range of architecture, furniture, technology products, and services designed to help people reach their full potential. Together with our partners, we design spaces to help people work, learn, and heal. So, today's topic or theme is how to return to a better and learning environment. So better work and learning environment, sorry about that. It's not about going uh, back to school or campus, it's about moving forward to something better. Uh, it's about creating safe and compelling learning and work environment. So this is a uh, time for an experience that's fundament fundamentally better. We will discuss the current situation with Ms. Dina as project director of CDA, Ms. Maitri, Lecture of Interior Design from uh, Taruma Negara University and Kyoto. So this will be very interesting to learn, so stay tuned. Uh, also, what's exciting is um, there's going to be questions and prizes and the grand prize. So in this section, there will be games with attractive prizes. In the middle of the section, there will be distribution of two vouchers. So remember, two vouchers for the audience who can answer questions from me, okay? And at the end of the session, the audience has the opportunity to get one unit, okay? One unit of steel case series to share by asking questions in the Q&A column um, during the discussion panel. So one lucky person will get a grand prize. So cannot wait, right? I'm already excited myself. So. Keep watching to answer questions and to generate potential questions for the chance to win. So now I would like to introduce uh, Elizabeth Chan. Uh, we call you Liz, right? Uh, over the past 10 years, uh, Liz has helped some of Singapore and Southeast Asia's leading organizations um, shape their workplace environment. Liz is now in spatial and environmental case extensive research and design of all the places that we're learning happening. Um, are you there? <laughs> so uh, thanks for joining us today. Uh, so please do introduce um, again yourself and, and Jim Settler, who's um, uh, a steel case. Yes. Hi, um, thank you, Ibu Tri, um, for the introduction. I'm really delighted to join Working by Viveri to be part of Mayantara Jack ID 2021. So Ibu Tri has shared it's really going to be an exciting and insightful um, session for the next 90 minutes. Our topic is um, for the session is how to return to a better work and learning environment. And as we know, students and employees are expecting a dramatically different experiences on campus or at workplace versus the one they left before the pandemic. So it's not about going back to campus or workplace, but it's going back to a better experience. Now let's jump right into our session. So for our first presenter, he will be presenting from the Steelcase Innovation Center at Grand Rapids, Michigan. 
I am pleased to introduce Jim Stelter. He is the president of Smith System and leader of Steelcase Learning. Smith System is a brand of Steelcase and a leader in educational industries focused on providing solutions for the emerging environments throughout the world. Jim will be joined by Jamie Moyer. She is the customer experience consultant at Steelcase Learning. And together, they will bring to us different pop-up learning spaces at the Steelcase Learning Center and talk about these new and emerging trends such as immersive learning. So now let's take a look at Jim and Moyer's video. Hello, Jamie Moyer with Steelcase Learning here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Hey, Jim. And I'm Jim Stelter. I'm privileged to be the leader of Steelcase Learning. Today, we're coming to you from Grand Rapids, as Jamie indicated, and this is the headquarters. We're going to take you on a tour of pop-up spaces that really show you where the emerging spaces of education are going. At Steelcase Learning, we've combined Steelcase Education with Smith Systems, a company that Steelcase acquired about two and a half years ago. In bringing those together, we always follow this path. Research turns into great applications, which then we create the products that support it. You're gonna see that in how we support lifelong learning. So let's get started. We're gonna take you through, oh, 10 to 12 of these, and it's gonna be a lot of fun. So we're on the way, let's go. Okay, here we are at the active learning space where we're going to kick it off and show you a brand new product introduction, Elbrook. Jamie's going to take you through and a little bit of what active learning is all about. That's a crucial element in the foundation of Steelcase Learning. Jamie? All right, come on in. So it might be a great time to pause your video and have a discussion. What does active learning mean to you? What are you seeing in your market? How forward thinking are some of the, the schools? Are you dragging, dragging them along? We'll have to start here with our new product introduction. Elbrook, looking at some of our latest research around spaces, seeing a lot of dense environments where schools are still trying to do active learning, student led learning, but we would see that the students would move a lot more than the furniture. So, looking at other options for spaces, do you always need maximum flexibility with the tables, or do you look at something more organic shape? So, students can flow through the space, you could easily change group sizes, a little bit easier to expand and contract. You'll see a theme as we're going through. Playing around with a variety of postures, a variety of group sizes. So let's keep on rolling and we'll show you a little bit more. All right, let me give you another example of an active learning environment. This is a great place to talk about blended learning, high flex environments. So think about those instances where some of the students might be on campus and some of them might be online. So think about the importance of a swivel chair. Let's turn around and make eye contact with some of those students that might be dialing in from home. Thinking about sight lines with the camera, thinking about microphones, that view to the instructor, hearing over and over from students that the most important thing is to be able to hear their instructor and second most is to see them. We have a lot of discussions around flexibility. How much flexibility do you need in classrooms? Do you want to be able to flip up the tables, roll it around? Jim might have a little dance class coming in here later, so you need a lot of flexibility to push the tables aside and make that make that work. Yeah, she's showing a, a wonderful collection of product that can mix together and hit different price points. We have Steelcase Education, some of the Steelcase products, Smith Systems. They come together to com complete a great look throughout. She's also demonstrating the boards. Those boards are allowing, they move around. We need to have it, having a lot of conversation around well-being, student well-being. If they can express themselves, that helps them be a little bit more mentally, physically healthy. So thinking about simple tools like this where the boards that students can grab it, write on it. If you want to go into test mode, you can take that and put that in the table create a little bit of dividers between there. So some low tech tools really resonate with students. Really a smart application of product. Remember, it started with research. We created this type of application because we witnessed that's how students and instructors were interacting together. Now this hybrid space and technology blending together is gonna to be at the forefront. I want you to come back. We're gonna have four classrooms we're currently redoing and we're putting together Zoom, 
Barco, LG, Microsoft to demonstrate how those work together with students, all different applications. But we showed you some lifelong learning, some classrooms that could be in corporate learning and higher ed. What about that group that is 12 through 6th grade? We have a variety of products that allow you to answer that question and answer the questions about how to clean. We know facilities is part of it. Cantilever chairs that easily go up on desks. We have marker boards. We've created magnetic marker boards because teachers like to interact. We created products that learning not only happens in classrooms because of backpacks, battery power life is extended now. We can have in-between spaces at work. So we've created products that migrate from the classroom out to in-between spaces and including kindergarten through fifth grade, products that work throughout blending technology together. Now we go from classroom, we're moving over, let's take a look at how those in-between spaces really work as well. Okay, as I mentioned, that in-between space, no longer classroom is the only place. A lot of activity happening in hallways or what we call the in-between spaces. And as we're doing this, here's part of the Steelcase research team right here playing with the con different configurations. Yeah, so we are looking at the relationship of technology to digital. We're looking at analog around us and also boundary with really a perching posture. We're starting to try to understand all the relationships that are going to make hybrid collaboration really good for people back in the office. That's tremendous. And as you can see, look how everybody's sitting, right? We have some people, so no longer is it in a chair. These in-between spaces have become really prominent in terms of making education work in today's atmosphere. So we not only have it at the uh, flow form, which is great, we're going to see an outdoors event, but we have also some higher ed applications. Jamie? All right. So it might be great to pause the video for a moment and have a discussion around in-between spaces. What trends are you seeing? Are you taking over hallways, taking spaces out of those cafeterias, libraries to gain back space for students? So you might see some more casual informal settings with what Jim just showed you or you might look at something that might be a little bit harder working do you step outside of class with your laptop with your fellow students want to be able to grab a seat keep that backpack on sometimes look at those skinny footprint spaces put a marker board in a space add power and it's going to be that hard working area for students so seeing a lot of these spaces pop up and think about where you can take some real estate back and create those students out okay let's keep running Okay, we're now into VR and AR, a, a real emerging space. When you think about what that means, virtual and augmented reality, it adds a lot to the learning. Experiential learning, just as we said, active learning. So here we have Jamie. We're using Post and Beam, a great Steelcase product. She's in goggles, but it creates a boundary for her that's reading where she is and allowing us to have the space denote where she can travel to. It's a great application. And I want you to think about that being a science lab or another type of lab. Look at her. She's experiencing, she's moving with it. Those things, hearing, seeing, and feeling, make that learning experiential. Now we've also included some of the rockers, soft rockers in here. Because if you imagine, as she moves over, now she's gonna get in the canoe. And she's going down a river. And she's not just in any river, she's in the Amazon River and she's feeling it. She understands what's going on. I want you all to compare that to maybe reading a book. Totally different, totally different learning experience and totally immersive. It's a great application that Steelcase is leading the way in terms of augmented and virtual reality. Now let's move on another spot, which is eSports. Come on. Esports is an emerging. Now think about esports, okay? A lot of students will go home right after school. They go down in the basement or they go to their couch and they sit there and they start playing esports. They're not with another individual. They're not collaborating. So what we're doing now, there's 3,100 esports leagues in the United States now where schools are competing against one another. And these applications are gaming. This is a training area, just like you might be uh, practicing football or basketball or baseball. You're here participating and learning. As they're sitting there gaming, the coach is behind them watching the student work. We've created adjustable spaces, ergonomic seating, and you're gonna see a lot more of us in terms of esports. But again, I want you to think about the student instructor relationship. They're going from somebody that 
that was by themselves into a collaborative atmosphere where they're learning STEM skills, how to work with computers, and most importantly, how to get along in a team environment, which is gonna carry them on. And now there's great scholarships in colleges as well for these students. Now here we've used Turnstone, Steelcase, and Smith System to create a coaching area where we're sitting here talking to our favorite student because she's one of the best esports players around. And you can see that we're having a collaborative thing. We just went through training. Now we're talking about, hey, here's some of the things I think you did great. Here's some things we can work on just a little bit. I'm trying to coach Jim on Mario Kart, but well, we're, we're seeing if he could figure, out, figure that out. That she is. <laughs> now what we've created over here in this whole space, and we'll do a real quick walkthrough, is a whole area that's going to be devoted to esports. We're putting in gaming computers and we're going to relate to how people work. We're going to watch them work. So all the Steelcase employees, Jamie included, can come in. But we have a decompression zone. Jamie's demonstrating it here. Jamie, tell us a little bit about this product. Let me have a mindful this moment. Yeah, back to that well-being conversation. So looking at some different options that are new from Steelcase with our tent series. So looking at this pod, do you need a space to be able to go and have a little bit of maybe visual privacy, still see what's going on, or could this be a little meeting room? So we're looking at different types of spaces, giving you feedback from the tools that are coming through and say, hey, is this interesting? Is it something you could see, or is this a little wild for you? So it creates a different settings. You're going to hear a lot about wellness. Wellness, bringing people back safely, what's happening. One of the biggest areas that we're working on is air filtration. So as you look at people coming back safe, the sound and the understanding that the air is being treated is a big deal. We created Cascade Air and a number of products that allow us to work within that. As you open this Cascade product, which is a collection of storage components, so it fits within that, we have what's known as a HEPA filter. HEPA means that it's a high grade, it gets really uh, incredible detail details of the virus in the air. So it cleans the air for, for what's going on. It's within the cascade unit. We also have another unit that's a little more standalone. And we've come up with wind, which is a small unit that gives you a personal area of air filtration. Now this is only part of it. That's if you're in a building. What about if you're in an outdoor space? Jamie? All right. So we can help you filter your indoor air, but we know outdoor air is always better. So thinking about what your outdoor learning environments look like. Are they places for students to come out with their laptops and work, or are they more respite, those break areas to come out and feel the sun, listen to the birds? So looking at some different settings, thinking more of a casual, informal gathering. Where I might have some different postures, use the product in different ways. Or I might want to come out with my laptop, my Chromebook, and then do a little bit of shade from the sun. So maybe I'm going to choose to sit on the table with the umbrella, or thinking about that stand up high posture. So showing a range of options, but know that the high school settings that you're seeing today, there's so many more thought starters and ideas that we can provide you as well. So roll it over to Jim. Now we know planning is part of what everybody has to deal with. So we created a series of classroom products that allow you to plan. And we've created an area where you can break it down and actually see what it looks like in terms of square footage and the size of it. One of the real popular emerging products is a single desk adjustable unit that allows students to actually adjust where they're speaking. This pairs really well with the teacher's desk that allows adjustment and easy move around. We know a lot of those teacher spaces instructors are shrinking because the class classroom is more important. As technology shrinks, they're moving around a lot more. Now, Jamie's going to tell us a little bit about Node, one of our favorite products. Jane? So we love when we have groups here, we can start to have a discussion around how much flexibility do you want? How much surface do you have? Do you have some simple tools to hold your iPhone, your drink, your iPad? And we can show how you can be in lecture mode, maybe I'm going to go into group mode, and how in two seconds I'm in a different configuration, and how it's very easy for the instructor to have students move around the room, get into different groups, circle up, or get back into lecture mode. We will keep rolling. Okay. One of the great places that you can really hunker down and study is a design-oriented space. It takes up not much room. We've created this product so you're flex, you're standing, you're almost in an upright position. The chairs are upright. That's that athletic position. You're ready to go. You're ready to move. Product extremely flexible. As you look at it, it has a lot to do with how we communicate to each other. So as Jamie approaches the desk here, we have all the boards here necessary to talk to her. We can take those boards and you can see what happens. We move them and they're in a spot 
that allows us to really take a look at it when we're in a seated position. So we've gone from the vertical to horizontal to be able to work. That's the type of research that we study in the application and then create these great products that support learning in many different modes. Now, uh, this is analog. Let's take a look at how we support digital. So great place to have a conversation about a couple different space types. One might be those large active learning classes. Are you working in any spaces where there's like 100 students, 200 students in an area? Or are you looking at some of those smaller pieces, like a library group study room, where you want to have a place for students to gather around the table, have power in the top, but be able to work together on the same document. So looking at solutions where you could have the monitor be part of the table, let's raise it up when we want to work together, let's drop it down when we want to go into lecture mode and improve sight lines. Or maybe this is that group study space where you have an active area, you also need to have some of those individual spaces. And we know they wouldn't be side by side, but they would be in the same building. The group study, something a little bit more individual, that modern day take on a study, Carol. You have that place to be able to come in, place your backpack, use your laptop, have power in it, turn on your light, back to that well-being conversation, Put your feet up and work, but still see who's approaching you versus the traditional study carol when somebody's coming in from behind. So that balance of the group areas as well as some of those quiet individual focus zones. So we'll take you over to our last space, which is a maker space. Maker space, maker space, right, Jamie? Absolutely. Maker space is all about movement. It's about a space that allows you to make things. There's a surprising name, maker space. When you look at it, a keynote is flexibility. We have a lot of movement in the area. We have the ability to move products in and out. To take this space out, you can move pieces and all of a sudden you have a full area to work out in, to have yoga in. So in the morning, it can be that area where kids are working in Lego, the afternoon it's robotics and the evening it's a dance club where we're learning to dance or learning to knit but come a little closer because one of the things that we need to do is talk about storage so when you have that variation you're moving things around and we have a series of storage components that allow you to store things lock them so that that space can change as the needs of the students and instructors change lock it up put it away okay next group come in let's learn and let's not forget the wall. Such an important part of learning is the vertical space. So when you look at it, here we have PolyVision product, all magnetic, so you can store things up here. And the real secret of what we've done here is we've created a process within an application. So as you order this, we have a new product that's being designed through the specials team. It's a great idea where you have all these components are actually printed in a 3D printer. So the students instructors get a space, the first thing they work on is how do I put my tools and all my items away? And we give you the files to be able to do that. So that's a great way to end because it represents what Jamie and I wanted you to see today, what Steelcase Learning is all about. We're about taking the research that said a place like Makerspace needs to move around, needs to engage students and be a lot of fun. It's about an area that can change as the learning paradigms change and as we work with you. We take that and create an application and then create these great products. So I really appreciate the time today on behalf of Jamie. All right, thank you very much. <laughs> and Jim, we really appreciate you being part of our pop-up tour of these great spaces. Come on back because it's gonna change because learning's changing all the time. Thank you for the uh, video, um, Liz, um, especially to Jim Selka. So now um, we will start the question. So I will ask the audience um, several questions and the audience can actually win vouchers. So probably um, the first question I would like to ask is, uh, what if, so you can answer. Um, you can answer on the chat or the Q and A. Um, so the first question is, what is the name? Okay, what is the name of the presenter in the video? I think that's very easy. <laughs> I have uh, three. Um, 
three multiple um, choices. So one, is it John Stelter? Yes, someone already uh, answered. Yes, it's Jim. So congratulations to Agustina Ika. Okay, great. You have the first um, prize. Congrats. Um, don't forget um, to give your name uh, and WhatsApp number to direct message for panelists. Okay, Agustina Ika. Okay, no worries. There is another question for whoever answers first. Okay, number uh, the second question is. Okay, second question is which of the products are suited for outdoor learning? Okay, um, I would know if someone been paying attention. Yes, correct. From it's B is flow form. So it's from Irma Damayanti. Uh, thanks again. Don't forget to uh, give your name and your WhatsApp number to uh, direct message for panelists. So thanks. Um, I think I guess uh, everybody's excited about the questions because of prizes, right? Okay, so anyway, let's get on. Uh, congrats again. Um, don't go anywhere for the grand prize. That's the, the last, yeah? Uh, still can share, okay? So next, I shall give the floor again to you, Liz, to introduce Amboise and to present. Um, Thanks, uh, Ibu Tree, again. Uh, we're always so energized by Jim and Jamie and always amazed by the variety of um, pop-up spaces. Actually, one of my space favorite spaces is the outdoor um, application flow form. So congratulations again to the winners. Um, and to Jim's point, right, we need to constantly evolve learning um, spaces because uh, learning is always changing. So we do that by our research and create applications and products to support the needs. So I hope this spaces um, at the Steelcase Innovation Center has evoked a lot of good inspirations for our designers and clients. So please reach out to Viveri and Steelcase for any questions or support. Now over to our next um, presenter and I'm just ex as excited to introduce Amboas Dutivit. He's based in Hong Kong, but joining us live from France. Amboas is the Asia Pacific Director for Steelcase Learning. He works with leading organizations, schools, and universities to create both work and learning spaces that enable people to be more collaborative, efficient, and successful. Hello, Amboise. Great to have you join us and share further on our latest research titled Learn Better. Over to you, Amboise. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It has, has been a very great start of the day. I mean, it's very early morning for me. But again, it's good to start with uh, the other part of the world uh, in, in, from Indonesia. So great um, uh, getting the energy, of course, of the panel discussion, I mean, on the uh, panelists and the speakers, plus as well a great, uh, a great uh, facilitator and uh, a good start of the video from Jim Stelter and Jamie. Uh, great to see those five emerging um, learning space that has been presented into the video. And at some point, I would say this, this is the result of um, a, a deep dive research with regard to learning spaces. So I'm gonna share some slides with you. Um, you listen to the, <laughs> to the presentation, you're gonna have some question after to really to win a, a great uh, ergonomic chair from uh, Steelcase for Better Learning. So I hope uh, this, uh, <laughs> This presentation is going to be uh, very insightful, but this is all where we are coming from. We are coming from deep dive research, as Elizabeth III and um, Jim were saying from the research, we apply the research into real life. And guess what? We design a combination of product to support different, um, different behaviors. So that's really how we go at Silkes, our process is research, application, design of product. So it's a, a full ecosystem. So I'm gonna go through that, I'm gonna share my screen and I'm gonna 
use the technology. Yes, should be okay. Yes. Let me know when, if everything okay with the screen. But that's as well fundamental. As far as uh, we go today, technology has been working very well. That is critical when we gather different geographies around uh, a, um, a, a, a digital conference. So learn better, work better. We always associate learning and working because when we work, we can learn. And when we learn, we can work as well. So that makes totally sense. So one of the, I'll try to go to the next slides. Yes, that's right, perfect. I think you are quite familiar with those pictures. You've been into this kind of challenges during this pandemic. And I, I, got, I just seen on the chat a very interesting question that is, are you optimistic with regard to this situation as a space planner, interior designer, or learning, <coughs> learning education uh, furniture designer? So I will start uh, with a, a very, very straight answer. Yes, I am optimistic about this situation. And we're gonna go through those slides together. And I really hope that we're gonna have those questions about why we are optimistic about this, uh, this situation. So you are familiar with those, uh, those, those pictures I just show you. And here, this is where we are coming from. We, if you go on our, I mean, on our Steelcase Learning website, if you go to Google, you, you type, research from Steelcase, you can have an access to all about what we've learned during this pandemic. Blended learning, hybrid environment, well-being. Well-being has been uh, one of the, our key research we have done the past 14 months. We talk about remote, remote learning, campus, of course, campus changes, prototyping to understand what we've learned. We need to translate what we have, we have been learning into a physical space, and then we evaluate our solution to move forward to, um, uh, to support the needs of students um, and uh, educators. We've been through a lot of round table conversation. Are we facing some technical challenge? Okay, so I guess uh, while we wait for Ambas to join back in, um, I think he is sharing in terms of... He's sharing in terms of um, the approach into of our research and coverage. Um, so, um technical issues a little bit there. Yeah, well, um, due to the um, internet and it's, and was is from France, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> In terms of different time zone and still waiting for him. Uh, maybe um, while waiting for his presentation, um, Liz can um, uh, talk a little bit about, you know, your case itself, um, also um, how maybe a little bit uh, regarding how it can um, change or make better work and learning environment um, while we wait for um, to connect with Amboise again. <laughs> Go ahead. Sure, Ibutri. So yeah, apologies on his connection. And I guess, um, I'm not sure if we can reshare the presentation slide, but as where Amboa's last share, it's uh, the extent of our research. It actually includes across 10 countries. 
as we also work with um, scientific partners like uh, MIT scientists to understand the, um, the, the virus itself. So it's very science-based uh, research as well as also interviews, observations, uh, virtual discussions with um, the survey participants. So across 10 countries, we have also looked at 8,000 floor plans. Uh, from a work perspective, they actually translate to 40,000 workstations. We also do the same research uh, for the learning environment, which is tasked the um, research title, Learn Better. I'm not sure if um, we're able to pull out the slides so that I can also talk about the next um, slide. Otherwise, uh, while we're waiting for that, um, essentially it's as we look at um, the spread, we also uncovered different personas of um, students and of course instructors due to this prolonged period of uh, working and learning from home. So there are a few of these personas that we relate to. Um, I know it's a bit difficult to um, imagine if you don't see the slides, but we uncovered um, these. So hopefully the screen comes. Oh, thank you. Great. Yeah, if we can move to the next slide. Yeah, okay, if we can go back, <laughs> sorry, to the previous one. Can we move back to the previous one? At least go to where our voice has stopped. Yeah, I think it was this okay. slide or the next slide. Yeah, uh, he was starting to talk okay. about how the pandemic and how the research I think is starting and and what kind of views or what kind of approach that uh, still takes to doing the research. I think it was this slide. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah the next one, thank you. Yeah, so essentially, um, this is really something familiar for everyone. You know, we are so used to wearing masks, checking in, look, um, you know, taking temperature checks as well. Um, and a lot of protocols are being rolled out in schools as well as in workplace, better um, air quality um, in the environment and as well as a better hygiene standard. Move to the next slide. Thank you. Yeah. So aside to understanding um, the, the virus and also observing what are the changes, we are also understanding the intense challenge from specifically from education perspective. So well-being, which was also covered by Jim and um, Jamie as well, the, there is um, accelerated awareness on educator and student safety plus their well-being as well then um, there is an emergence of more um, blended learning just because there are more learning um, from home. And, and of course, to Ibu Maitri, she will probably share as a, a, a professor and an institute, um, you know, what might be those challenges in balancing technology and learning um, in this blended environment. Obviously, as we look at 21st century skills, there is always this um, pressure in trying to look at new skills development. Of course, from an institute perspective, we want to be able to attract and retain students um, and an organization. We also want to do the same thing, attract and retain employees. Uh, of course, uh, a very common um, uh, realistic challenge we look at is financial um, you know, realities of it. Next slide. So as I shared earlier, it's really not about going back to the school or to workplace only, but it's really going back to a better experience than the one we left. Next. So what exactly what does better means uh, in terms of a learning environment? And as shared, we work with um, scientists as well to understand the science base um, of the virus so we can actually create safer and more compelling environment as we all return to campus or return to work. Next slide. 
So this is where we talk about that science-based approach. Um, by understanding how uh, the spread of virus, we can actually mitigate and create a more systematic approach in managing that in the environment we are in. Next. So this was the five persona I, I shared. So, um, and I actually resonate with um, two of this persona. This is um, through our research on prolonged period of working or learning from home. What are the emerging of these personas? So I'm actually a um, leaning towards an autonomy seeker and as well as a frustrated networker. So I do enjoy greater work-life balance now that I can work and learn from home. But um, you know, without that face-to-face -face meetings um, and also you know, being not able to be um, having this uh, actual conference, um, it is frustrated that we are losing some of these connections uh, and trust is easier built when there's a face-to-face -face conversation. So I think this is interesting um, and I would love to hear um, from the panelists um, as well uh, if we have time. So very common, we also hear about people being overworked as a caretaker where there is no boundaries between starting work and then getting off work and coming back to your own uh, responsibility from a personal life perspective. Next slide. So um, this is where we look at, you know, what are the things that uh, learners or students um, actually like while work um, learning from home. So they actually like, you know, recorded um, lectures, the comfort of home, being able to multitask, and they can actually complete their work sooner. But what they also didn't like was that prolonged period of isolation. And we know that human beings are social creatures, and we always want to have that face-to-face -face connection. We want to be around social communities. Um, there's also more distraction, um, obviously learning from home, you know, from other things that's happening in the environment or from a digital tool perspective. Uh, there could be a lack of variety in spaces uh, because many uh, users are sharing the same space or even devices and technology. Um, so these are the things that we observe what people like and what people didn't like. Next. So for every crisis um, that happens, uh, there's always that opportunity. So at Still Case, our central question when we look at the research is how can a global um, education community use this opportunity, uh, this moment as an opportunity to actually build back that better um, experience? Next. So uh, moving forward, I'm going to um, actually share some of the five needs that we've uncovered due to this um, prolonged period of um, you know, working and learning from home. And these needs actually drive four macro shifts that we looked at, and that in turn create new design principles uh, when we design spaces. Next. So for a better experience, we actually uncover these five needs of both students and educator. And this applies for uh, employees at workplace as well. Next. So the first is being safety. Um, and it's not only about um, being safe, but you really want to be able to feel safe as well. Um, the sense of belonging, productivity, comfort and control. So I think the next couple of slides will actually deep dive into each of these. Next. So first, um, safety, it's really about, um, as we surveyed, which, what are the safety um, priorities? Uh, air quality remains a top concern, and we know that the virus actually can be airborne and spread through it. So um, a lot of schools uh, and universities and organizations that we work with, the first thing that they look at is how can they improve the air quality? And to Jim's uh, video earlier, there was a solution that includes a air purification system in a storage unit so that it does not look foreign in a learning environment, but yet take care of the air quality and improves um, that quality that we breathe in. Next. That sense of belonging, um, this is really something important we found. Um, and as human beings, as I shared, we want to be able to feel part of a community. And um, this lack of belonging when we are um, isolated from our community, it actually impacts students from a well-being, graduation rates, and achievement perspective. So that's huge for um, the schools itself. And an impact on an educators as well, you know, in terms of attendance, uh, well-being and also the retention of educators. How do we retain these faculty? Next. 
So there's also an impact of um, that sense of belongings on the effectiveness of learning. And we talk about this um, growth of blended learning because we need to um, learn more from home. So the online experience actually have a negatively impacted students' achievement. And again, this is huge. So 30% um, of high school students, as you can see from the data, are actually not prepared for university because of this experience and, and isolation. Um, on the right side of the slides, you can actually see 40% you know, of students from lower income households um, are equipped for remote learning, but 72% of them from the high income household are actually equipped for that as well. So there is all this data, and if you want to deep dive further, we're always happy to talk um, about that separately. Next. Comfort is one of the five um, key things, and um, there is more emphasis in terms of ergonomic furniture um, while learning and working from home. But we also need to look at comfort, not only from a cognitive, um, emotional, as well as physical perspective. Next. In terms of control, which is the last uh, need, um, students and instructor, we found that they want more control now due to this prolonged period of learning um, and working from home when they return to campus or to workplace, they actually demand more control. And so there's actually 47% um, increase in the number of instructors who want to be able to move and convert the furniture in their um, institute or universities. And 92% increase in students who say they want to be able to move furniture as well to support their learning. So they want more control over their environment. Next. So through understanding the needs, it actually allows us to um, actually look at the four uh, macro shifts that's happening to create a better experience mix. So the four uh, macro shifts are safety, productivity, inspiration, and flexibility. And let's do a very quick deep dive uh, into each of these mix. So when we look at safety, um, in the past, before the pandemic, we were looking at health and um, safety standards. And now we actually need to look at, you know, a smarter campus and actually create a more systematic approach to mitigate this um, spread of the virus. When we talk about productivity and effectiveness, um, it isn't about this, um, it's not just designing for you know, efficient and, and single purpose space anymore. But in the future, as we return, we need to create more multi-purpose spaces um, to balance both individual learning or learning as a group or collaborative um, learning. In terms of inspiration, we used to design to attract um, students and faculty through the aesthetics of it, of the environment. But now aside to um, delivering on aesthetics, we actually need to look at community, which is um, and the sense of belonging, because that is one of the needs of um, people when they come back to campus and to workplace. How do we create more resilient environment also, and also um, considering that environmental and social impact. The last bit about flexibility, where we know that users want more control over their environment. In the past, we are designing for, you know, designing fixed architecture or spaces that are more for permanence. But now we need to ensure that the campus are more adaptable and can support multiple ways of learning and working. Next. So with that four macro shifts, we actually uncover four new design principles. Next. These are the four design principles and let's deep dive into each of them. So next. Let's start by looking at me and we and what do they mean? What do we mean by that? The me means the type of individual spaces, um, learning spaces that I'm at. And the we means the, the group kind of spaces. So essentially, when we look at spaces, we need to be able to balance, um, you know, how does the space transit, enables the individual to transit from individual learning to group learning spaces. From a faculty perspective, how does the space support from individual working to a group collaborative working space? So it needs to have that quick shift between learning alone and learning together. Next. Now, as we look at fixed to fluid, um, and we talk about the need to create more multi-model type of learning spaces, create a variety of learning spaces to support different activities and learning. 
you need these um, highly adaptable spaces. They need to have um, you know, mobile furniture. It could also have mobile power to support individual. Technology needs to support both face-to-face -face learning, virtual learning, online and blended. And how do you design spaces to enable better division so that you can actually create separations to mitigate the spread of um, viruses or disease in the um, environment? Last but not least, we talk about having more flexible architecture. So how do you create spaces that enable um, the, the movement of those spaces? And to Jim's video, you have saw how those spaces convert, having different um, heights of furniture enables standing to seating learning and how they can quickly transform those space so it's multi-use um, spaces. Next. So for an open and enclosed, uh, we talk about um, having more me um, shielding. So in the past, there was a lot of individual, but in an open space. Uh, sometimes we call it hot desking. And there were a lot of um, collaborative um, spaces that were in enclosed rooms. But post pandemic, pe more people as individual want to be in an enclosed space um, to feel protected and safe. And for the group of users in an enclosed space, they actually want the reverse and want to be out in the open so that there's better air circulation um, in the environment where there are more people in there. So there's going to be this shape, uh, shift in terms of increase of individual in enclosed environment and more um, collaborative settings in out open spaces, including outdoor spaces as well. Um, next. So the last um, design principle is about grading digital and physical. So as we shared this, with this shift in pandemic, there's going to be more um, online and blended learning environment. So how do you balance this blended and hybrid learning and working um, and ensure that the experience remains um, as, as suitable for individual? I mean, just like how we are conducting this um, conference, it's virtually, we are across different time zones and different countries, but yet we are sharing experience, knowledge, um, and discussion as well. Um, last but not least, we also want to be able to leverage um, smart sensing technology to derive more data um, to be able to, en to enable us to make better decisions and also leverage AI, which is very um, prevalent now. It is something growing to enhance our individual experiences. So leverage on technology on that. Next. Um, next. So um, this will be a very quick overview of how some of these design principles play out in an actual environment. Next. So you can see the four um, design principles in each of these different spaces. So I'll just do a very quick um, run through. When we talk about um, braiding digital and physical, so you can have enclosed spaces that allows people to be on their technology, but they are also um, in group settings where they have an open environment and they are also balancing the digital um, technology with actual on-site um, participants. There's definitely more open and enclosed spaces to allow people to have more choice of where they want to be. And um, you can see the variety of individual and group learning spaces and how each of these spaces can easily um, transform into um, learning, to group work, to individual, or even a yoga space, for example, to Jim's point in his video. Next. Next. So again, you can see all these different um, spaces um, and I want to be mindful of time, but you can always reach out to us to find out more about some of these um, individual slides. Uh, we basically create applications that um, use the new design principles to create solutions for that. So every of these spaces in the learning space, which has um, active learning classrooms, uh, are actually using all these new design principles. Next. Next. Yeah. So this is another of the emerging learning spaces called the learning commons, which are spaces in between classrooms. And this would mean that there's huge traffic of people moving um, across these spaces. So again, with the different design principles, how can you um, bear in mind the needs of an individual looking at um, what are the macro shifts and then apply the design principles of each of these spaces? Next. Next. So these are another variety of spaces where we call student hub. It could also be faculty hub as well. Next. 
So as we shared in this great range of spaces, it's really about providing choice and control for um, users, faculties, um, and staff. Next. So these are just um, actual renderings of um, these spaces. And again, do reach out to us if you want to find out more so that we can have more tailored conversation on these things. Next. So I think we can, yeah. So exactly, it is about coming back to a better experience and a better experience actually start with better learning spaces as well. Next. So we're here to help. Do reach out to us. And with that, I'll pass over the time to Ibu Tree. Okay. Thank you very much, Liz. So unfortunately, um, Amwa's um, connection was trouble, but we, we made it. And you did um, a very well uh, the presentation regarding the steel case. So uh, anyway, in here, I saw already six or seven questions. Wow. <laughs> okay. So for the view, uh, next, um, let's uh watch a video uh from Vipere before we start uh, the panel discussion so i give uh, the floor to the house um video thank you Vipere berasal dari bahasa latin atau bahasa itali yang artinya adalah to live untuk hidup satu kehidupan harus terus berkembang bertumbuh, bertambah kuat, bertambah baik. Dan sama di organisasi kami pun, kami berkomitmen untuk terus memberikan servis yang lebih baik dan juga bertumbuh lebih besar lagi dan berkontribusi lebih besar kepada seluruh stakeholder Vipere Group. Itu yang menyemangatkan kita. Kami di Vivere Group bergerak di industri interior and furniture and fixtures industry di mana kami ada enam line of businesses pertama yaitu kita bergerak di dunia project, trading, distribusi, retail, export, and manufacturing Di project kami mengerjakan end-to-end -end service dari kontraktor interior, mechanical electrical plumbing contractor dari office, hotel, apartment, rumah sakit, and some retail shops dan untuk mensupport divisi project, kami mempunyai lima manufacturing facilities dilengkapi dengan cutting edge technology and machineries, di mana masing-masing dari pabrik kami juga mempunyai fokus masing-masing dari woodworking facilities, metal facilities, peralatan, panel, dan juga ekspor. Dan untuk ekspor, kami fokus untuk memasarkan produk-produk rotan, kayu, dan juga produk-produk outdoor. Dan kami bukan hanya saja melakukan OEM, tetapi kita juga memasarkan produk-produk desain milik kami sendiri untuk didistribusikan di skala internasional. Dan tentu di bidang trading dan juga distribusi, kami merepresent Steelcase, kami merepresent Vitra, dan beberapa brand internasional lainnya. Tentu ini semua bersinergi dan saling melengkapi dan dapat memberikan end-to-end -end total solution kepada seluruh stakeholder dan customer kami. Dan di bisnis retail, kami saat ini mempunyai 11 furniture and home decoration store dengan product range yang lengkap, modern, mulai dari furniture, kitchen and wardrobe, dan juga home decoration items. Saat ini juga kita dapat memberikan produk dan juga jasa untuk hospitality market. Kita dapat memberikan produk-produk furniture indoor maupun outdoor untuk kebutuhan hotel, cafe, F&B, dan juga public spaces. Kami adalah perusahaan yang pertama di furniture and interior industry yang go public. 
Ini menyatakan komitmen kami untuk menjalankan bisnis ini dengan profesional, dengan good governance. We have a very diverse workforce, mulai dari tim engineering, tim project di lapangan, tim pabrik, tim supporting, yang hingga hari ini kita mempunyai lebih dari 1000 karyawan yang berkarya di Vivere Group. We strongly believe in our people, mereka berkontribusi akan keberhasilan dari Vivere Group. Kita bersama-sama mempunyai satu prinsip pegangan yang kuat, yaitu values dari nilai-nilai perusahaan dari Vivere Group. Quality people, quality work, dan menciptakan quality life. Itu adalah values kita, dan saya yakin semua orang mau mempunyai kualitas hidup yang baik. Vivere Group telah berkarya lebih dari 33 tahun dan tentu saya berharap Vivere Group dapat terus berkarya ke depannya menjadi world class company Oke, okay, thank you. So next, uh, we will have a panel discussion with the theme um, is how to return to better work and learning environment. Uh, before that, let me introduce uh, to the panelists. Um, oh, hi, Amboaz, you're back. <laughs> hi. Um, I was, I was uh, speaking to myself, sorry. Oh. <laughs> I didn't know I was, uh, I dropped. I <laughs> didn't know I fine. dropped, actually. Okay, welcome back. So uh, for the um, panelists, uh, we have uh, Binga Kiseno, Uh, she's a project director of CDA. So Bina has been with CDA since 2005 with over 20 years of experience in design field. Um, she has excellent communication skills and is committed to professional growth and development. She has uh, specialized in managing design, documentation and administration for major commercial, retail, hospitality and residential projects having worked extensively abroad and owning and operating her own design business for years. She put an emphasis on quality and teamwork. She brings a, a broad range of skills to any project. Dina will be monitoring the progress of the entire project globally. She is also the technical advisor on all projects. So a few, such as a few of the projects she has done, which is Deutsche Bank, BBS, UOB, Microsoft, Beckett uh, Bentisher, also renovation of Atma Jaya Sumangi campus. So, wow, that's a, a lot of lists. And so, hi, Bubina. Hi, hi, everyone. Hi. Good afternoon. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon to you too. Thanks for joining us. And we also have uh, Bumaitri, uh, Bumaitri Widya Mutiara. Uh, she's the head of interior design department from University of Tarumanagara. Maitri has a background of bachelor's degree uh, from Tarumanagara University and master's from Prasthaya Mulia Business School. Since 2014, she has been experienced and responsible in developing management of major in, uh, uh, of major in Tarumanagara University. As an alumni from the same alma mater, she strives for acknowledgement and a broad, uh, broader understanding about interior design. So in some occasions, she plays a part in researches to develop furniture design, especially in Tirabon and Jakarta. Until today, she has created six products that have been successfully marketed internationally and even in exhibitions. So hi, Bumaitri, how are you today? Yes, Butri, thank you, I'm fine. Okay, hi, everyone. thanks for joining us for today. So, so It will be a very exciting discussion today. Um, so we will start with the first topic. Um, and we also have um, uh, the, the grand prize. So don't forget to jot down the questions. We already have, I think, 10 or 11. Wow. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. So um, the first uh, topic is um, what does better mean to you? in your role uh, or nature of work. So who is going to start um, and sharing? What about Bubina? So what, what hey, I got the first grand prize then. Yes, <laughs> you get the first, uh, <laughs> the first um, position to, to speak out. Okay. All right, uh, to us or to me, uh, a better, better workplace because um, my 
my experience is more on the workplace. Uh, I've done I've done ninety percent of my projects are workplace, uh, but it's not going to be far away from education either because it's public space. So to me, better means um, better in in sense of uh, work life uh, balance. To me, this pandemic has put us all all on hold. Uh, we all startled about it uh, and we kind of step back and, and look at ourselves and, and, and um, uh, evaluate again what our lives mean. Because as designers, and I know a lot of designers here, we like to spend a lot of time at the office. We, we work uh, overtime. We just love what we do, even though the pay is low. But <laughs> we, <laughs> we, like, we, we love what we do. Okay. We do what we love. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we, we kind of put aside uh, exercise. Uh, we can do it tomorrow. Um, you know, eating right, we can do it tomorrow. But uh, with this pandemic, we kind of started ourselves and we, we have to go back and say, okay, now it's time to go back and rework ourselves, our life. Okay. Um, be better. Uh, we, we look out for ourselves. Uh, well-being is also very important. So we'll do wellness. Uh, wellness is very important in our life and safety and, and health, I suppose, because without the health, why, why do we have to live? Why do we have so much money if we don't have the health? We want a healthy. But I'm, I'm quite intrigued that you, know, you were saying about health and safety, because that's what I think nowadays everybody uh, missing to, you know, to be out there, to be involved, uh, especially, I mean, you as a designer, you are like renovating one of your projects or renovating university. I mean, if that's relates to maybe Bumaitri, I mean, you as a, you know, as a lecturer at the university, I mean, the head of the interior department, uh, what does better mean to you? I mean, for designer perspective, we kind of try to, you know, start to understand uh, from, Miss Dina's uh, side, but what about you as the, um, the lecturer in, uh, to give uh, discussions with the students and everything? How does uh, better um, for you? Yeah, uh, okay. Okay, Miss Tri, I think what does better means for us, I think, yeah, in our institution? Better means we have actually this pandemic gave us opportunity to develop our academic program widely uh, while distance no longer become a problem especially in Jakarta we know uh, it was very um, traffic it 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 disturbed us mm -hmm. also for international program the budget will be a problem since the since the our program becomes online better also gives us a chance to collaborate more with other profession because everyone is also going online. Uh, the other side, going back to campus, would need a better environment for us, for work, for study, um, would need to ensure the safety, which means availability of uh, antiseptic in public area, um, clean rooms with regular disinfectant schedule, open air by opening windows and door, um, also about the seating with the distance regulator. I think uh, we we concern about that. Okay. So uh, why uh, do you concern about the seating? Is it? I mean, um, I don't know. Is it the the way that um, it's relaxing, or is it the way because of the pandemic, or? You know, maybe um, you can elaborate more, so I can also ask Amboise to you know to fill that in as well later on. Um, yeah, can you elaborate more about that? Yeah, about the sitting layout. Uh, actually, we still have a very classical classroom. I mean, a, a more traditional while um, the lecturer speak to the students. Like that, not not in the collaborative room. I think uh, that also concern since this pandemic. Okay. Mm. Um, but what do you think, Amboise, about I mean, um, 
from the beginning, we were learning about steel case and how steel case can provide a better like work experience and environment of the learning. I mean, how does uh, steel case respond to that, especially nowadays? Okay. Oh, okay. I, I would I would put as well something maybe we have not. Can you hear me? It's okay. Um, yes, I think the volume yes. is quite low. Um, I would, I would, but what? Oh, um, breaking okay. up. Okay. Yes. Whoops. You're breaking up, Ambois. I know it's very hard. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Yes. I'm breaking yes. up. We can hear okay. you now. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. So, okay. For for me, it's about student success. So for me, better is all about student, what success, look about how to create personalized spaces, personalized learning experience, engaging the student into an environment they feel com not only comfortable, but they have trust. They feel trust with their educators, with their other students. They are motivated and they are as well how the student can be authentic. So the, the environment needs to be designed to really express each individual skills okay. and for them to be authentic. So the, okay. the space has to be well, acousticians, uh, sailing, floor, furniture is an ecosystem in yeah. order to provide the best for the student for their yeah. success. Yeah, so it has to, um, how do you say it, uh, support um, the success of uh, the learning. Uh, so it's not only, I think, about the chair itself or uh, the configuration, but also the whole environment as an ecosystem. Um, that's, I think, is that correct? <laughs> yeah? Exactly. Okay. So, it is it, it is correct and I like yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so share one potential challenge you may face when achieving a better learning or working environment. Maybe this one we go backwards from Andras first. <laughs> okay. So one potential so, challenge that you face. I mean, when you know when maybe in a project or when in a research, um, how does that uh, make a, a potential challenge for you? Yeah, so I think the, the challenge is, there is, um, the, the biggest challenge I would say is like when everybody goes back to campus, so today, they're gonna be few, few, fewer people at the campus at the same time compared to before. The okay. uh, education institution gonna really manage the facilities they already have, but with less people. So the challenge is how they're gonna really work on the space to again, the student gonna be, feel not only safe, but they're gonna feel as well a way to learn better again, learn better, but with less people than before. We have these habits of having a lot of students in the campus, so natural connection. So at some point with few people, the challenge is gonna be how students are gonna adapt themselves yeah. to learn better, connect better with less people. So that's space again gonna gonna play a critical role. Yeah, I think yeah to to well, well remind ourselves that uh, nowadays uh, in an enclosed space it cannot be crowded as before. So um, that is a challenge. I think especially for I don't know universities. Uh, maybe Bumaitri can share that because I mean what I know when I mean I'm too as a guest lecturer uh, at the at the university. Uh, it's very hard, you know, when, when you have to face a hundred of um, uh, students at once, you know, and this pandemic, uh, it restricts you of a fewer student in one place. 
And how, how, how do you um, respond or try to find a solution for that? Maybe Lumaitri as a, as a head of interior department can share her experience on that. Yeah, uh, okay. This is about the our, apa, uh, about about teaching experience. You mean Butri? Um, what um, I think is about not only teaching experience, mm. but because it's a challenge now, a pandemic, and what I know, uh, we are not yet facing our students. Mm -hmm. This is still Zoom, but one yeah. day uh, it will be. You know, we will face uh, them one day. And what are the challenges you think? Because what I know in design, um, we usually have studios, which yeah. consists of a lot of students in one big room. So mm -hmm. it's not only 10 students, they can be 50 students. And how is that a challenge to you? And how do you try to, um, how do you say it? How do you try to manage that challenge uh, from now? I mean, now it's still Zoom, but one day, uh, you guys will, you know, perform your your lecturing and everything, and and how does that challenge for you? Yeah, I think the challenge is about in our curriculum, we have to change it. Yeah, um, the old one is very. We, we have um, much what what we call it um, mata kuliah. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now we have to make it more compact and more integrative, so um, we can give it to the students. It's very focused. Um, we only give the yang sangat penting sekali that that's very necessary to for them to learn, and the rest. They have to learn by themselves, and that's um, our challenge, um, Butri. Okay. Yeah. So um, it's actually the, the the curriculum, how you make it uh, as a system, so you can later implement it. Um, yeah. Okay. But what about Bu Binga as a designer? I mean, one, uh, you know, is trying to support in terms of field face is trying to support with the research and everything. And Bu Maitri, as a you know, lecturer, she's trying to say that the system for the curriculum can be you know, um, revised or you know, reviewed to make a better uh, living or working environment. What about, as a designer, what uh, aspect or uh, perception that you would you know, implement uh, to when you design the space? I think... Um... The, the challenge after this uh, COVID to make a better workplace is, uh, of course, first of all, is safety. Safety is always number one. Uh, we have to make everyone feel safe to come back to work. We want everyone to come back to work. But uh, having live or having work at home for the past year and everybody gets um, comfortable, I mean, I think 50% are comfortable with working from home and 50% are still, uh, especially with kids uh, at home screaming, maybe they want to go back to the office because they cannot work at home. So uh, we have to have a, um, a hybrid or, or say going back to the office will be, will be a challenge. Uh, uh, maybe it's going to be uh, more like an, the office is going to be more like a hub. So 50% will go to the office and 50% will stay at home or will do alternate uh, days of work. Uh, I think that's going to be a challenge. Um, I think that the, the biggest challenge as an interior designer is uh, going, not going to the office or meeting people and having, it's, it's not having tactile feeling. That's the, the most uh, difficult thing that I, 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 I feel right now because as a designer we always like to touch things we, we like to, to touch materials uh, we, we need to know the the services or how you know is it smooth is it rough is it uh, is it fluffy that's uh, one of the uh, thing that I miss the most okay yes so tactility um, I mean from this uh, panel discussion, we're trying to connect uh, our different uh, backgrounds. And maybe um, we can share a little bit of a recap or summary what 
what do you hope uh, from this, um, how do you say it, uh, towards or moving forward towards a better work and living environment? What is like a key or hints or, you know, for uh, audiences or practitioners or researchers out there? Maybe you have something um, to inform or share a little bit like a recap, maybe starting from um, uh, Ambroise. Yeah. Yes. Um, as a recap for, for this conversation, if you can hear me, I'm sorry about that. But I, I think looking forward to specifically Southeast Asia and Indonesia, where I think there are like tremendous uh, optimism in the way that in the next five to 10 years, we're gonna see tr tremendous changes that we need to be ready for. And we are happy at Stickers to share more about the, uh, not only about the research we, are do we have done, but we are currently conducting a research about uh, Australia, uh, Asia Pacific, US and Europe, about all the learning about um, student engagement. So we're gonna talk about student engagement and student experiences. So that the next okay. 12 months of our research. I'm happy to share in, uh, in the meantime, more insights to all of you guys. Okay, that's great. Uh, looking forward to the final research. <laughs> uh, what about Bubina? Anything you want to share for interior designers out there, especially uh, during this pandemic and, you know, um, thinking, rethinking about what's better uh, for, you know, um, the executions of the projects or anything maybe? Uh, I think we are quite fortunate being an uh, interior designer or designer. We can work from anywhere. Uh, we, can, we can collaborate uh, through online, but the only thing that we, need, we still need to do is uh, going to the site because okay. uh, going to the site, we, we need to be present there. We need to see in details because uh, if we only rely on the contractor to, uh, you know, to make a video around, they only show us the... The, the nice area, the good yeah. area, right? Not the bad area. So I think uh, we still have to go to the side and we have to jeopardize our, um, we have to risk our, our um, safety uh, to go to the side. Um, uh, yeah. Like we, uh, I tell my, uh, us or designers, um, we cannot, we have to be out of there within two hours. We cannot be there uh, more than two hours. So I yeah. think it's, it's again, going back to the safety. Okay. Um, and for the and and yeah, just precautions. Yeah. Yes, okay. yes. Okay. Um. So, Bumaitri, maybe last words. Uh. Not uh. Last but not least. Um. Just a short one. You're on mute. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. My last word. I think what I have to do. Uh. For next. Uh. I mean, what we can only do is uh, we setting our curriculum, we setting our system, and we um, um, set the parameters for for the students and the lecturers can do the learning better. I think it's only that. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much for the enthusiastic and um, exciting. Uh, I think people already have a lot of uh, questions here, so. I guess if we look at the questions, uh, please kindly, uh, Liz, uh, can you choose maybe from um, one question or I don't know. Um, is Liz there? Hi, Liz. Hi. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, sorry, I think we are running out of time because, you know, sometimes when we discuss things, we forget and we just love to discuss it. So, um, Maybe at least from all those uh, 18 questions, uh, is there like uh, at least one question that you know you want to uh, choose that is very interesting uh, instead of uh, initially we wanted three, right? <laughs> but don't worry uh, for all those questions. Uh, thank you very much for, from the audience who gave the questions. Uh, uh, five uh, best questions will be, you know, will be, uh, whoever is lucky um, from the wheels of names later on. 
but maybe we can have at least one question um, uh, from this to you know, choose and maybe from the panelists can can just give a short um, answer. Go ahead, Liz. Thanks, Ibutri, and thank you to our panelists. Um, it's really interesting to hear all the different views. And of course, thank you to our audience for staying on uh, with us. Uh, although we only have one grand prize, but I think um, everyone is a winner, you know, going through all this um, interesting information and insights and research and hearing from our thought leaders. Um, so I do see a lot of great questions uh, in fact so many from the audience from wellness um, to you know how do we meet, uh, mitigate the spread of virus and also cognitively how does it affect the environment as well so um, I think I'll pick one question it is actually from um, Kinasi if I pronounce it correctly apologies if I mispronounce Kinasi um, and um, the question actually I think it's quite suited for Ambois uh, to respond um, after the pandemic pandemic um, cases increase again in Indonesia, uh, rules and regulations change very quickly from one decision to another um, for the country. So with our research uh, at Steelcase, how can we you know, um, be adaptive to these changes? Um, is it okay if you share a little bit, Ambuas? Sorry, Liz, uh, I think that's the wrong one. Uh, that's a question from Permata Hati, not Kinasi. Okay. Uh, Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's okay as long as is it the um, is it the right question that you wanted to ask, right, Liz? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay. Anyway, so Andres, maybe you can just give a like a short um, answer. Yeah. Yes, very short. I mean, I, I have um, I have I'm based in Hong Kong usually, but I'm currently in France. I'm now listening to. Uh, uh, a conference and participating to a conference in Indonesia. So yeah, there are very, very different things happening during the pandemic according to the different countries. And the reaction and the, how they handle the situation is quite, they are learning from each other. So I think I try to answer the question about how, how is gonna be with all those change and all those decisions quickly made, that I, I still think that People are learning from each other. The globalization is there, learning from what's happening in Europe, from what's happening in Indonesia, from what's happening in, uh, in, in, in Greater China or in Southeast Asia or US. This is important that we okay. share more than before because we okay. can activate, accelerate the change thanks to this globalization of the, of the, of the actions. Okay. Thank you very much for the short, and we have a short time as well. So anyway, thank you for all the audiences who give questions. Let's do the wheel. OK, let's spin it. <laughs> OK, is it spinning? No. Um, oh, OK, I should count down. OK, so three, two, one, go. Yay. Okay, who's the lucky one here? Ah! Wow, okay, so it's Kinasi Jati. Congratulations to you, great. So don't forget to jot down your name and your WhatsApp number to the uh, um, panelists, yes? So anyway, thank you everybody. I think um, the session uh, has ended and thank you very much uh, from Steelcase, uh, Ambroise, uh, Liz, and also uh, to Dinga, to Maitri. So um, make sure to stay tuned and subscribe to Mayantara YouTube channel, Mayantara Indonesia, for more Mayantara JKID sessions and follow our Instagram account at mayantara.id and at HDII Jakarta. Up next, we have upcoming sessions at 3 p.m. to 4.30, Safe Hospital Design in Modern Healthcare. So presented by Interface, uh, Jan Yang, William K. Petty and Farida Alaidus uh, from HDII. So thank you all uh, for joining us. I'm very sorry if there's a little bit of technical problems earlier on, but thank you. Have a good day and stay safe. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Mm, thank you.
Nama saya Risto. Nama lengkap Nua Rista. Anggota HDI nomor 231. Nah, sebagai trio designer kita harus selalu mempertimbangkan kebutuhan dan keinginan klien yang akan kita terapkan dengan standar teori dan prinsip desain yang benar. Nah, HDI sebagai lembaga yang diakui oleh pemerintah bertugas menjebatan di kita antara profesional, industri, pendidikan dan juga dengan pemerintah. Saya ucapkan selamat kepada Mayantara Jack ID. Halo semuanya, nama saya Helena. Saya anggota HDI 598 DKI AB. Saya kerja di Desain Partners Indonesia sekarang. Nah, pesan-pesan buat HDI, semoga program-program HDI makin keren, makin inovatif, makin kreatif, terus banyak juga nanti desainer-desainer muda yang bisa ikutan gabung dan kreasi-kreasinya lebih oke okay lagi. Oke, okay, maju HDI. Bye bye. Halo, saya Wira Prihatini, interior designer. Saya juga anggota HDI, Himpunan Desainer Interior Indonesia DKI Jakarta. Saya berharap profesi interior designer akan terus bisa beradaptasi dan maju ke depannya. Dadah!